Hello everyone, welcome back. So basically just doing another live stream on my mixes of ratios for my pebble dish. I was asked the question of how to mix for the top coat but also you'll need to know how to mix for the undercoat as well. Um, obviously I'll go through bits and pieces of my materials that I use um, talk about some waterproofers um, do a lot so obviously hopefully you're watching this here um, and it's not live don't worry if I've missed any questions out I just want um, just drop me in a few questions and I'll be sure to get them answered um, or do a wee video on them if it's easier but um, just for the, the likes of the Pebble Dice I'm getting quite a lot of questions on on this particular video um, about people as well saying what they would and would not do and stuff um, um, about adding lime and stuff to their, their render coat and sort of how they would mix it and there's just lots of there's lots of different mixes obviously um, there's lots of different materials out there that you can use um, but obviously if you're trying to patch in something um, which the particular question, the, I think the guy's trying to do a job very similar to this. So if you're trying to patch something in, you're going to want to try and source the materials, especially the stones as well. You're going to want to source them so that they look the same. Um, as if you patch in pebble dice itself, if you're patching pebble dice, it is pretty difficult to get the edges and stuff in. A lot of people were saying that obviously this job wasn't 100% complete when I finish this video so I don't have to clean up and stuff but um, a lot of people are saying you could tussle in your wee joints and your corners and stuff but just the, the sort of obviously the ratios um, are the, the very they are very important um, if you get your ratios and your mix is wrong it can pop off crack um, which will be no good um, obviously it won't be any water weather protection or anything if it's cracked or it's gonna make a mess when it falls off. Um, so it was Scott McLean was asking me, or McLean, I'm not, not sure how you pronounce it, buddy. Um, and he's just popped in. But um, yeah, so he was asking me about the, the ratios and stuff. Um, it's funny, actually, a, a friend of mine was, when I was during work, so it was hard of me to actually give him any sort of pointers. He does gardening for a living. And he was asking me about rubbing up white salt and cement and stuff and lots that, of sort of questions but I was trying to get to him and answer his questions and stuff over text but I, if I'm working most times I don't really have my phone on me so I'll, sometimes it'll be a later on sort of reply and the guy was asking about can as you can see he was asking can you salt and cement scratch it with an ordinary salt and cement and you can yes I would probably recommend you use ordinary grey grey cement with ordinary plaster and sand. Um, it's important to use plaster and sand, guys. You can you can use building sand, but I would I think in my opinion plaster and sand is much better to work with for plastering, and building sand is much better to work with for bricklaying. Um, so if you're you're gonna pick sands, being cure whatever, go definitely make sure you get clean plaster and sand in bags and um, if you're doing a larger job you might get a big ton bag but basically you do need plaster and sand and your undercoat there, there is going to be a couple of clips of me mixing even in this live stream where I go through ratios but my my mix for an undercoat of sand and cement would be 3 to 1 and that obviously is 3 sand to 1 cement um, and I was saying in my last live stream that the way I measure it is always in buckets. So if you're wanting, especially for color, for if you're matching colors and stuff, you, you have to measure it out. Um, so if you go um, th three three sand and one cement, and you keep your cement all the same, the same, the same make. The, the cement I'm using here is. It's either blue circle, I can't really remember, so it was a few years back, at least a year anyway. So it was either blue circle white cement, Portland white cement, or it was 
Alleborg cement. It's sound I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but it's it's like A A and then Le Leborg cement. Um, so it's, it's just easier for playing back in. If you use three sand and one cement, dry mix, then slowly add water to get thick consistency and apply the area. Will it stick to the wall and not just fall off when apply the pebbles? Um, so if Scott, I, I'm not sure what core your background is. Um, this the core I'm doing in this particular video is white. Um, but I would recommend you do a scratch coat of three to one and your, your next top coat will be a wee bit weaker. You can go three and a half to one or four to one. Um, I would recommend you go four to one just to keep it keep on the safe side um, for your top coat. But the you were asking me about what way to mix it. Um, this the sand I'm using here, again I'm not sure what, what sand you're going to be using, but that's called it's called silver sand or silica sand. You probably may find it in places called white sand as well. I have lots of videos sort of, of me actually using white sand cement because I, th I thought to myself it's it's not something that's that's used every day and I thought it would make interesting topics for everyone. Um, but uh, again, even my own house has this background on it and it was used very widely, I think maybe in the 60s and further back. Um, but rough cast itself, believe it or not, um, was back a lo long, long time ago, when plastering sort of started it, people maybe started messing with plastering and started sort of experimenting with it. Apparently the inside of houses, things that I, I research, sadly enough, the inside of houses would have been real rough cast. So you can imagine that big bumpy stony walls before the, they started obviously thinking of like using mud and stuff and, and even sand and cement. Um, so Obviously, they used to pebble dash the insides of houses. Um, I know there is one church up where I live, and the inside is pebble dashed and it's painted, and it looks horrible, absolutely looks horrible. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you're gonna, if you wanted to dash into three to one, and um, the mix, Scott, sorry, I sort of get sidetracked there. If you were gonna dash into three one, it would actually still stick. The stones would certainly stick to it, and. Um, but again, that, that would almost mean you're doing it in one coat. You'd be better to do a scratch coat. The other thing is, we're coming into good weather, buddy. So you may want to think of, obviously, if you scratch it one day. I scratched this, believe it or not, a day previous. And you could see how dry the sand cement got just as the wind's crashing in here. Um, actually, I think that's one of the reasons this video is not as popular as what it could have been. is because of the wind, the sound quality is rubbish. The wind sort of... It sort of put, takes away from the video, but um, you'll think about. So some people will do in the winter. They'll use uh, waterproofers in their mix, and they will they put waterproofer in their top coat only, where other plasters will put waterproofer in their scratch coat in the summer, and that'll slow down the top coat setting. So that's something you might want to think about. I'm not, not sure on the, the size of area you're, you're doing yourself, Scott. Um, as you're doing a bigger area, you might want to think of picking up a bit of uh, waterproofer. Um, I think it's Larson do a pink waterproofer. I'm sure if you type in pink waterproofer, you'll find a good waterproofer. And it should be like a two-in-one. So it will give you your plasticizer as well and plasticizer does is move it work, lets it be workable um, so that it's you can move it about with a trowel with a bit pardon me with a bit of ease and also it'll help your stones um, bed in and adhere to your render coat in the background um, so basically the problem you'll, you'll, you'll have um, with pebbles just bouncing off will be if it does dry on you, if your background dries too quick, your pebbles are just going to bounce, bounce off, and you find yourself difficulties making the job look tidy at all. And um, it was terrible camera worker, and um, so you you know some people wet their stones up a bit, give them a wee not like I don't mean to put a half a bucket of water in, but they'll maybe rinse up their stones and just. Just so that the stone itself is a bit wet, moist, so it sticks better too. Um, so there's, there's definitely there's lots of ways to go about a pebble dice job. 
Um, you can see even um, covering up the floor so that I have good, good, good clean area. Plus, if you cover it and then you cover it again with different coverings, you can catch your stones and reuse the clean stones then that way. Um, no, no, Scott. So, Scott, you, you know you, you don't paint the waterproof for anybody. Sorry. And um, yeah, you actually add it to the mix. You can you can add it to your water. You'll have to. You can actually see in the background here. Um, hi, Andrew boy. And um, you can see in the background there that there's a big drum of pink stuff, and that's that's waterproof and motor mix as well. So this is um, this video here. I have that uploaded as well, and that's that. There's me mixing sand cement and render, but um. So, what's up, Andrew boy? Um, Scott's just asking there. I'm not sure if you can see the the chats above you. You just can chat away amongst yourselves too. If if you just have anything, any points to add in or stuff to to ask as well. But so basically, you'll. The motor mix, it's, it's a motor mix, so it goes into your motor. Um, some of the chemicals, there is things you can paint on as well, like exterior PVAs and the SPRs that will seal the area as well and make it more waterproof. But most plasters will add the waterproofer to the mix. Um, for that, you're, you're going to have to read the back of the, the drum because um, it, it'll vary the, how much sand cement you're working of how much you need to add it's a real sort of complicated part of plastering is getting all your measurements it's there's a lot more miles in it that that sort of way and um, so you, you need to work it out um, obviously it sounds like you're going to be mixing it by hand so you're going to probably be mixing it in a wheelbarrow and if you mix it up dry what you said there that's that's a pretty good way um, See, Andrew does it different than me, so he does three, three to one's too strong for him. He'll do a scratch at four to one and I finish at five to one. Um, but three to one, I've, I've never had no problems, and you know, it, it's always came out well for me, both for rubbing up as well as for dashing. Yeah, you can you can add it. Some some plasters add their their waterproofers to the scratch coat and the top coat, and um, to be safe. And um, plasters also seen some techniques. If it's going to be one, they'll put it in the bottom coat, and then it'll it'll slow down the top coat, so it'll give you more time to get your stones on. But if if you watch the the other videos I have of pebble dashing, the way I do it is I would. Wet my walls down. I'd have my mix ready, and um, I'd also have my stones already in place so that I can start dicing. Uh, as a sort of, if it's a small area, you could probably coat it and then dice it. But if you have everything ready there, then you'll not be in a panic of panic and going. It's drying on me. It's setting, and the stones aren't going to bed in and stuff. So you'll be able to just straight away get get working working at it that way and um, SBR can be added into the mix as well yeah that's what I was saying at the start I do believe um, that, that's what people put lame lame um, I think he's only doing a small job so may make it very confusing with lame and cement um, but yeah, like if I'm using a big mixer, you'll maybe only put in 2B shovels of lame. And lame will give you a nice fluffy, fluffy top coat. Uh, your stones will stick lovely. Um, but I find with lame, the, the top coat will dry a bit quicker too. As well, the lame sort of seems to help the moisture come out. Yeah, that's I find that too, Andrew. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's nice and fluffy um, with lime added in. But again, if you're only doing say like a ballful or a butterful, you you you'll need very little lime in it. You wouldn't want to go overboard with lime, especially especially if you've scratch coated as well underneath. We were and then pulled it down. Actually, got a message from a guy from pulled it down. That was, I think he was doing a job similar, um, and he was saying obviously that the, the ratios and stuff help them. Um, but again, you can small if you're doing small jobs, you can sort of maybe experiment on them, especially if it's around your own house, um, and see what's working best for you. How you cope with your mixes three to one. But obviously, obviously, if if you read what Andrew said up above, you can see that. He's even said three, three, three to one, four to one, five to one. So you're always going that bit weaker as you come out, out coach ways. And um, believe it or not, I have seen, uh, I have seen from companies, real big companies, talking about eight to one. So if they think that eight to one's going to set solid, you know, five, five to one's definitely going to set solid, and um, that way. Uh, no, I have a bucket scoop made. It's I would say it's just a small, just a small wall. I'll just use the bucket scoop. As you know that the silica sand, the way when I'm dashing that wall, I find the silica sand sort of it settles like like a bit more like building sand. It brings me back to the question my mate was asking me that he's a gardener and he was planning on rubbing up with this um rubbing up with white sand cement for obviously a wee garden wall so. It obviously wasn't, you know, it wasn't going to be too fussy, and he was saying, but he he was asking, did I, did he have to scratch and with white sand? So and I said, no, you can, you can just scratch away with ordinary stuff. You can see here, and it won't affect your top color. Um, the only thing is, if you're going to mix a big big lot, like if I'm mixing for a big cable, I'll try and mix a full tub ready to go that way. But yeah, as you can see, I'm just using a, it's Rafina sent me a big bucket scoop, and I'm just using it to. To sort of help me mix up on the ball and just scooped it onto the. That's handy enough, and I'd actually be at my back more now than I was working out of that ball. That way, but. So, if if, if I was doing your job, the wee small job would do it similar to this. I'd help maybe have a wee bit of waterproofer in my scratch coat, and maybe still splash down, especially any joints. Your joints are going to dry faster than anything because that your joints will be old plaster that's maybe been on for 60 to 100 years i'm not sure what age the house is you're doing so obviously you're going to want to wet down your joints and stuff so that when you coat up them it doesn't soak in the moisture and helps your stones bed in them areas especially the joints you need to be particular careful around the joints because they will be what everybody sees and particularly every every plaster look, looks for joints even in a, a big wall will always look for joints um but going back to sort of the guy was going to rub up with this silica sand i'm not sure it's going to be i i probably should have told him it would be better to do it with just ordinary plaster and sand and just paint the wall white if they're wanting white or maybe do an acrylic render over it but acrylic render um or do it in k-rend them things probably cost a lot more you know depending on the wall size ways i obviously I didn't go look at the job i was busy myself so um but i must must actually give him a buzz and see how he got on doing that wall that way see see how it rubbed up because it's the silica sand it's not sort of it's not great for rubbing up even in this video i think i talk about it the silica sand um is good you'll find that algae sort of can grow on your dash you may have be black stains and be red stains be, be sort of algae gross it's like a be sort of mossy kind of stuff and uh they actually use that sand when i was buying it in a place and they say it, they sell out very quickly and i thought that was strange because nobody really does big pairs of of dry dice with white backgrounds as much as they used to anymore it's sort of more wet dice if anything and then rendering and now you're getting a lot of acrylics and k are coming in and Weber sort of 
sort of color coat renders and they're coming in and they're taking over and I thought it was strange that the silica sand, the silver sand was selling out really rapidly and they said the reason it's selling out there was because it's sterilized it's actually sterilized sand so um, nursery schools and stuff are buying it and it goes into the, the sort of the play box or whatever and then obviously they can't they must only be allowed to keep it for for so long and then have to dump it out and buy more so the sort of be building yards are getting they're getting a, a lot of work out of a lot of purchases out of these the play schools and stuff and um, so if you're ever making a play box for the kids you know what kind of sand to get and see it's, you can see the background there near fail because of the the crate but yeah how do you it can be pretty nasty stuff to work with and um, it definitely if you're especially like lame as well you gotta cover up with real well and um, because any be nick on your hand and by the end of the day it's going to be 10 times bigger it'll just burn sand cement burns as well so scott definitely recommend getting gloves gloves on maybe maybe goggles as well you know you don't want any of that stuff getting on you and um, definitely think safe when you're you're doing these wee jobs you know and um, you can see I'm wearing a lot. It's actually a, probably a warm day here, and I'm wearing. I'm sort of trying to keep cover up most most of my skin because you don't want to sort of land on your skin. But the care end that Andrew's talking about there, definitely, it'll burn holes right, right through you almost. It's quite quite a lot of sort of lime in that, and there is what was that? What was the chemical? Me and me and my mate Ryan was talking about. Um, It's basically somebody was saying that it's it's not great to be breathing it in and stuff. Um, so he's right. It's basically it's like a glass, you know. And you look at Kerry and you can see the wee bits of wee flickers of glass, but it's obviously just a, a Kerry and sand. But you can see, Scott. I'm not sure if you're still watching. I need to sort of fiddle about with the sentence this then I can be able to see what, what people are are still in with this but um you can see I'm just sort of pebble dashing this as I go. Yeah yeah K Rand well that, that's a thing too that's what I say in the description. There's K Rand actually have like a colour coat and stuff. Um I remember as it was still sort of coming out of my time I was working with a uh, basically my boss and be you stuff. I, I wish I wish I had a paid a bit more attention even in my 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 younger days because he was using and I did take lots of things on board. But he was using um we were using stuff. It was a color coat. It was like a yellow background. The way this is a white background. I'm dicing into. He was using a yellow background and it may have been like a lime mortar, but it was just coming. All we did was add water. There was no we gave the whole place a scratch coat. And all we did was put this into the mixer and add water. Um, like I know there is, there's coloured coloured sand and there's coloured cement. Um, carry and stuff do it that way. Um, carry and I think so. I think they're in Lauren. I think carry and from Lauren and Weber. It's like Weber's Dublin, and I think they're up around Lauren somewhere as well. Not a hundred percent sure. That way, and um, not 100% sure. I, th I think they where else is it? Do they have another plant, Kerry? And have another plant somewhere as well. But again, Kerry, and I don't know many builders that can drive into Kerry and buy stuff. You normally have to go through a uh, building yard, McNaughton and Blur. Um, yeah, I think Weber's, Weber's about somewhere as well. Maybe Dublin. Um, but Again, Weber is another company, and I don't think you can actually purchase straight from them companies. I think you have to go to a building yard and get them to buy it in, which means, you know, maybe they have a deal with them building yards, I'm not sure. Like, maybe they sell stuff to them, you know, weekly or whatever, you know, sell in some bulk. But they just basically, they don't really sell to public. So if you're looking 10 bags, you actually have to go through a building yard, like McNaughton and Blur and stuff that's, that's here. I'm not sure B&Q have a contract with them. Not really sure what way it works. 
probably if if you were sort of sort of through Weber or K-Rand, you could probably get the stuff straight from them. If you were like a listed plaster that worked for that company, I'm not, I'm not sure I know that they do recommend certain plasters. I actually think I've seen somebody writing up that the uh, KRN people were recommended from KRN and um, you know, I think it was a message and it went mo- that sort of went mossy and that they weren't happy about the moss um, so did, I think they were shouting me over it but I didn't do their job um, and the job I did maybe five years ago hasn't hasn't sort of had any of them problems but I went for antifungal side um, antifungal side uh, additives so that should help fight the the moss and stuff yeah sorghum base but there's there's lime in it too there's lime in it god knows what else in it i'll do it's there's i know there's definitely uh do not breathe this dust in on the back of it like um but yeah there's sil- silicone based it's definitely like like we were saying earlier it's it's like putting bubble gum on the wall people have described it as and i think they're right um it's it's definitely it's tight on the arms pushing on. I think there's a lot of companies, we plastering companies now, they're using pumps. Um maybe me to go down that road myself in the future, maybe get a pump and cover larger areas and then all your work will be in covering up and stuff and cleaning up because you'll be pumping that stuff on and it's cresting off the next day. So you'll be knocking jobs out so quick that the pump will probably be worth buying. You know, or maybe if if Kerry or if, if Rafael is watching and want to sort of think about sending a, a pump to me, and I'd have no problems with using it. I did have a few wee jobs that would have come in handy for, but I definitely could get big jobs on if I had a pump. Um, yeah, that's that's my setup there, Andrew. It was just taking it out of the the ball, and do have a spat board. I usually work with a spat board and stuff, um, but. It's sort of, I was going to use a wheel bar to help clean up and stuff at the end of the job, so I just thought, as well, just go out at that route. That way. But yeah, you're right, there's definitely a, there's like a, a silicone through it, lame, and everything, but every chemical that's under the kitchen sink's probably in it too. So it's got not, not sure. I ho- hope 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 I've give you a couple of sort of couple of good pointers that it's gonna help you help you sort of get through your job. I'm not I'm not sure if all these wee videos and chatting is working like, but um, definitely with them ratios you'll not um, you'll not sort of you'll not lose on the mixing department for strength. Um, but Paul Dyson for most jobs that I've ever seen, it's, it's definitely you need to be a bit of speed, so you're definitely going to want to be interested in getting it wet down and make, making the, pla- the plaster, the sand cement set slowly, so it gives you more time to, to bed in your your um, stones and that. Yeah, Andrew, at the Rafina bucket scoop. Um, I haven't used it for skim or bottom. I think I've only ever used it for dyson jobs because it's like a shovel. It's pretty big. I remember watching... Kurt Giordano, I'm not sure if he's, he's watched any of his, he's a Mac and Blaster. Um, again, cracking, cracking videos he has as well, just different than what we do here. Um, but them bucket scoops there, he wouldn't like it because it's so big. It, it does hold quite a hot fill. Um, but it's great seeing you stirring up, with, uh, even with wet dice. I've seen me filling up wee buckets with wet dice, it can be very, very clean. How's it going? Flavargo, uh, um, really bad at reading, I'm reading obviously. Um, yeah, it's going good here. Um, but thank you for the comment. That's that's another creative person, guys. You know, subscribe to me and they have a class we tell where they're they create lit night shades and stuff. So anybody's watching later on, and um, not really sure how. The messages come up in the videos after. I think they still come up in the top right corner. So if you're rewatching this video, so that you want to maybe see what you missed at the start, um, it's up to yourself. But you'll be able to see the messages, or if you're watching this when it's not live, obviously. 
you'll be able to see all the messages in the, the side and you'll you maybe understand what I'm talking about. I'm not just crazy talking about these names and channels and, and other plasters here and stuff. But um yeah, I think I think uh, Andrew Kirk Kirk he likes a good bucket scoop, but I think that he likes one where you do it in two scoops where this one I think it's maybe a wee bit kinder on your, your right arm. But that one definitely that's a one scoop. Oh, probably be be great for bolting, like a lightweight if you were doing a big pile of bolting and you were working out of a bucket. I know lots of people they sort of like to work out of buckets and stuff. I do like to say earlier, I prefer to work off a board and have a spat board for if I'm straightening up or anything. And then if I uh, if I do drop it on a spat board or in the bucket, I'll always get it back into the mix and I'll go again with the stuff as it's still fresh if you sort of when you're taking things off a wall and you're going to use it again and um, you may as well just throw it straight into the mix mix it up again and it's good to go I, one thing about me I don't really like waste and um, I think you find that when, when you're on your when you're working on your own and stuff or you're working for yourself that waste eats into profit um, so obviously the less you waste even when you're working for builders the less you waste the better as it's gonna, you know, it's gonna eat into their profit too, and they're gonna think of getting a tidier plaster that doesn't waste so much that way. But again, yeah, that the so my white cement, uh, um, Scott is, it's like an Alaborg. If you type in, it's like AA and Alaborg. It's in my last video. I have pictures of it near the end and you'll be able to see it but blue circle which is like I think they're called lar for le, le jar for something they also do a white cement as well which will it'll sort of help you out picking materials I'm not sure actually even what your background is might be just ordinary cement that way so I think what I'll do as well guys I, Obviously, I'm doing in the future. I'll be doing a few more of these, and I'm gonna sort of show how I go about color matching, the wee, wee tricks and stuff, techniques I've picked up over the years. But yeah, I think I've got mostly things covered anyway. So Scott, I hope, hope that sort of helped you out and um, give you a wee bit of food for thought and a couple of tips. Um, again, um, if you're mixing it by hand, you can mix it up dry and add in your, your water and motor mix. Just slowly add that in and mix it up. And then in your plate, then you can bash your stones on them and once you get it smooth. Um, of course, it's you can see, well, I know you've, you've watched this video, but... I probably do go on about trying to get the lanes out and any bumps, trying to get it as flat as possible. Um, if it's a small area, area, you might be able to rule it off as well and then trail it in again, just to have it a bit straighter and stuff. But, yeah, I ho hope you get on well with your wee job, Scott, anyway, buddy, and that this does help.
Yes, yes, I'll, I'll sort of let the video drop off there now anyway as it is. Um, so appreciate if you've watched as far. Um, appreciate the questions, Scott as well, and obviously Andrew and F Flav Argo. Um, so thanks for watching guys, and anybody who's who hasn't seen it live and came in later on, I appreciate all the support, and I'll catch you on the next live stream and video.